Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to my series Every Effect Explained in Adobe Premiere Pro. It's been a while since we did the last episode and some things have changed. Specifically, we're going to be going over in the coming episodes all of the brand new film impact effects and transitions which have been acquired by Adobe, which is a huge update adding dozens and dozens of new effects and transitions. So in the effects panel, we see all of these four new folders in the effects and in the video transitions, these six new folders of video transitions. And if you go to window extensions, film impact dashboard, there's even this whole new dashboard specifically for these new effects, which have some previews and apply buttons built right on them as well as its own search bar. So you still have the old way of drag and dropping them as well as this new way to visually see them. So in this video and the coming videos, we're gonna go one by one through the new film impact updates and we're gonna start in this video with the essential effects. So let's begin with the alpha effects. This can be a tool to create transparency and remove background from things like logo images, for example. If I click apply on this clip and go to the effect controls panel, in all of these new film impact effects, you still have the familiar controls in the effect controls. But for this one, I'm gonna choose manual detection. And do we have a threshold option? So I can adjust the threshold, which is like the black and white level until we get that transparency that we're looking for. So typically with black and white images, for example, uh, there was other ways to do this. If you, for example, tried to put this on screen or multiply, but in this case, there's not a clear black and white, and I could adjust the levels and then try to put blending modes, but this can be a useful tool for these kind of cases. I have red, green, blue options for things with colors, and you can even choke or expand the mask a little bit, or maybe do it the other way around, uh, remove one color and leave the background. The next effect we have is blur effects. And as I was saying, you may be familiar with the typical Gaussian blur that we've already had in the Adobe softwares for a while, but this one comes with a couple different flexibilities. One new button that I really like with most of these new film impact effects is the surprise me button, which just gives you sort of a random result possible from the effect controls. But you also have the start fresh button, which is cool. But just like previously, you can always add keyframes to all of these. So if you wanna make it start zero and then become more blurry over time, you can do that with keyframes. But the difference between this one and the typical Gaussian blur is you also have options for some chromatic aberration. So this is like that red, green, blue split you notice. Uh, this one also has an angle amount, which typically you'd have to go to a directional blur. So it kind of has like a combination of different blurs in one along with the chromatic aberration options. So you can get directional blurs, you can get general blurs at different chromatic aberration and animate all of these. So some flexible options. And remember, just like with our standard effects that we're used to, we can always add effect masks on these as well as save presets using these new effects, which I have tutorials on how to use presets and build them as well. The next effect in the essential effects tools is the rounded crop, which I really like. This one is like the crop tool, but it gives us the additional touch of having that rounded edge. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You can do symmetrical or left, right, top and bottom, but you can add that roundness to your crop. So you get that sort of film look or that binocular view. One cool use case I've done with this is stack multiple clips next to each other with these rounded borders. So let's say I can have one clip over here and then I can just duplicate this clip or put a different clip with a rounded crop and put that over here. And you get these kind of cool binocular view layouts. So you can just do roundness on one corner and get these different shapes or you know, on the bottom right and top left, you get these more like diamond or teardrop sort of borders, as well as adjust the angle as well. So you really have some flexibility with all these to create some cool geometric borders and rounded edges. For the next one, I'll add a text layer, and this is the long shadow effects. So whenever you wanna adjust text, you can go to the properties panel and you have all the things with the font, or you can center it quickly in the align and transform section. Right now there's a stroke on it, which we'll get into later, but the long shadow effect, if I apply it, adds this nice solid drop shadow, something similar to something you'd do in Photoshop, for example. And in the effect controls, you can do things like adjust the length so you can get a really cool long drop shadow as well as the angle as well. And you can animate these to grow or expand with the keyframe icon as for any of these that's possible. So this one's pretty cool. You can change the color. You can adjust the size, you can get a lot of cool different options. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory with 
the colors and the shadow lengths, but you can also use it on logos and objects as well. So if we combine, for example, that alpha effects that we were doing first and stack it after, so the order matters here, but we can get this firstly cut out Adobe logo and then add the long shadow effect on that. I'll keep this text layer active because the next one that I'm gonna do, skipping one over real quick, is the stroke effect. This one is like your typical stroke that you might be familiar with from the properties panel. But in this case, the stroke in the properties panel just sort of adds a stroke on the actual text. Whereas this one is adding a stroke onto the entire alpha of the shape. So we have all these controls here, the size of this stroke. I can hit surprise me a bunch of times. You get different colors, feathers, and textures and, and duotone colors that we can do. So if we have an entire shape or design that we've made, we can also then add a stroke on top and add that nice popped background to it using this, which is a little different than the stroke that's in the properties panel. Next to last, we have the mosaic effect, which is kind of familiar because there's a mosaic in the stylized video folder previously. And the difference in this one and the mosaic in the stylized folder, I'll show you side by side, is the mosaic in the stylized folder is just has a couple options, horizontal and vertical blocks and sharp colors or not. Whereas this one on the right has a lot of options. So for example, one big difference, you can even do hexagon tiles and you can even adjust the angle or add slight distortion. So it's not a perfect hexagon or circle. You can get a stroke on there. So you can get these other cool patterns. And if I just hit surprise me a bunch of times, you'll see some of the different sorts of mosaic that we can get. For example, one use case I've done with this is to censor out an object or blur it. And then you can just put a mask on just the part you're trying to blur and mosaic out or pixelate out. But this has some even more stylistic use cases because you can get different, so many different types of tiles. Lastly, in the essential effects folder, we have the vignette effects, which again is an option that's possible in the Lumetri color panel already before this update in the vignette section. But in the vignette section, you just have amount, midpoint, and you know brightness, so like light or dark. But in this one, you have a couple more flexible options. So I'll turn off the one in the Lumetri and in the vignette effects, you still have the vignette amount, but you also can change a lot more about the shape of it. So I can put it at an angle even if I want, and I can even make it any color. So if I wanted to make more of like a light leak that I maybe later put on a blending mode on an adjustment layer or something, you also have as with how it was with the Gaussian blur, some chromatic aberration options so they can make for some cool chromatically blurred vignette as well. So just a couple more options and a vignette in general can be nice to add that sort of lens shadow around the edges to focus in on the center of the clip. So those are the effects in the essential effects panel and a quick overview. In the next video, we're gonna be going over the lights and blur section, which has a lot of these fun light and blur type of effects. My name is Justin Odisho. This is Every Effect Explained. They're all on a playlist on my channel. Check them out if you missed any episodes and subscribe to stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.